Welcome to Hello. the Talk Around Pot. Are you recording? I didn't even know you were recording. Yes, welcome to the Talk Around Podcast, <laughs> okay. everybody. It's uh, our holiday special edition yeah, wow. of the Talk Around Podcast. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not really our holiday special. It's more so looking towards the future, you know? Yeah, yeah, this is more like a new, in, looking into the new year kind of special, I yeah. guess you could say. Because I, I will say up front, we do have a lot of basically end of the year coverage that will be happening in the beginning of next year you know yeah. we have our own little christmas uh uh gift exchange also coming up before then so that'll be our little holiday mm. treatment and then in january we'll be hitting our big ones that we always do the blastia awards we're gonna do our top 10 things of the year we're gonna do our updated tier list of everything we've reviewed we're gonna yeah. do all the things we got a lot in store, and that'll be fun. It's always fun wrapping it up that way, just like a present under the tree. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And but today, we look towards the future. All right. I figured, hey, it would be fun. Why don't we uh, talk about some things we're uh, looking forward to in the new year? Some goals we have for ourselves, both in general, and when it comes to like gaming and. and film tv whatever whatever it may be whatever we're want to work towards and uh mm. let's talk about it do we want to do a little bit of um what you say uh tie up some loose ends from the last podcast a couple updates okay. i mean we have the game awards uh we do have the place, game awards which i did not i didn't watch it personally but i did what i did see what? the results <laughs> do you know i i I had I postponed uh, something to make sure that I watched them. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, to make sure I watch them, I postponed some. I, I I told a person I was like, no, no. Well, I gotta I gotta do this. I heard they were rough. Me me and my buddy. Yeah, they, they were something. They weren't. <sighs> they... <sighs> I would say their problems are a lot were particularly this year were a lot more glaring than they have been in previous years. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I mean, it's basically like everything everyone criticizes about the Game Awards just doubled down, pretty much. It's just doubled down mm -hmm. on everything that people don't like about it, and it was, so that was very frustrating. Um, right. Do you have any particular uh, thoughts or takeaways from uh, some of the winners? Of certain awards, yeah. I mean, I think I think everyone that won, I think, was fairly deserving. Um, I think Baldur's Gate three winning Game of the Year uh, seemed very fitting based on everything I've seen, everything I've watched, everything my friends say about it. Um, seemed like a very fitting win. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom was not did not go home empty handed. It did win uh, at least for action adventure, which is a you know pretty prestigious category, I would say. Um, yeah, yeah, so it's... that, that, did, that did win some stuff, which is, which is good to say. Um, Final Fantasy 16 won best soundtrack, which I think was also very deserved. Um, Pikmin 4 and... won an award, right? What did? Pikmin 4. Pikmin 4, yes, won best strategy game, uh, yeah. which I thought was pretty, pretty sweet. And what, uh, was it, uh, Baldur's Gate that won best multiplayer? I think so. Yes, yeah, so you were, you were right little... about that one. You you were yeah. You had mentioned that. I was like, okay. I, I I was like, oh, it's gonna be Street Fighter for sure. But yeah, all right. Yeah, I I th that did win best fighting game, uh, which I think kind of goes without saying. I mean, Street Fighter Six is like absolute return to the form, return to form for that series. So yeah, um, it feels like it, there was a lot of good representation in all the winners. Like, you know, there was not yeah. no glaring omissions to me. You know, other than Alan Wake won. Quite a few, quite a few awards. Art direction, um, adaptation. Unsurprisingly, was The Last of Us. Um, yeah, I mean that that show is just art. I mean that's probably going to win some actual like Emmys and stuff mm. next year. So um, maybe, maybe when whenever those awards come out, I so. can't I can't really watch it. I haven't played the games, so you know yeah. I still have the whole Last of Us world out there for me to experience. Yeah. Um, I can say I, I didn't watch the whole thing. I only caught bits and pieces of it. I'd say it was a very 
very faithful but also like where it deviated it was like it was awesome like it still did an amazing job where it deviated from it it okay. didn't really it was just a really great game so uh by great game i mean it was a great show based <laughs> on a great game yeah i do i will notice that halo the halo show was that when was that halo show was that last year or two years ago i don't even remember it feels a lot feels longer than, than yeah year, i'm trying to remember when we were I'm trying to remember when we and I think it might have been twenty. I think that might have been 2022, late, late, like late 2022. But maybe. Regardless. Regardless. Um. Yeah. I. I think. I think. I. My biggest problem with it right now is that there's just not enough time for the winners. I think mm -hmm. that there's they rush through them too quickly. That's always been a criticism that I have for the game awards. Um. But even even aside from that, it's like this year in particular was a huge problem because they they technically said that they never like rushed everyone off, but they started playing music about like thirty seconds after the people started giving giving their speech, and I think a lot of that was to try to keep, uh, you know, to try to keep uh, uh, Christopher Judge that that sort of thing from going on that was again. Crazy. Yeah. And it's like, I, I understand that, you know, I get it. That was a very, very, uh, fairly indulgent. And he, he made jokes about it while he's up there, which I thought was fun. Um, at least. So he's self-aware enough to, to crack, crack jokes at how long he took. But, um, I mean, it's just unbelievably rude to me to start playing music when Eiji Aonuma is up there accepting an award and he has to have a translator <laughs> to, to, to say what he's saying to to a, an English speaking audience, mm -hmm. horribly rude, horribly rude. <laughs> so then you so you have the winners. So this is supposed to be a celebration of video games, right? I mean, obviously, also an advertisement for the future. Everyone wants that. But then you have like moments of like uh, Anthony Mackie is up there saying "shut up" to a guy in the audience for like for like five minutes and it's like really weird and awkward and strange Dang, i need to watch that and um and then you have hideo kojima come up and talk about something <laughs> and then it, it's kind of like it's like his new game project that i don't know if it's a game or if it's what exactly it is where it's very unclear <laughs> but he's also working with uh with uh, jordan peele and so, like, it's the two of them kind of self-indulgently talking. And this goes on for, like, eight minutes. This yeah. goes on for, like, as long as his speech. And it's, like, about a thing that we don't know anything about. <laughs> we know, like, nothing. There was a trailer, and that was it. It's like, there's nothing about Death Stranding 2, which that got announced last year, I was pretty sure, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it did. Um, so there's nothing about that. Um, I, do, I don't... And maybe the, he might have mentioned it offhand. I don't know. So there's like these long stretches where they're where it's very self indulgent. Obviously, you want to give Hideo Kojima's great. Don't get me wrong; I'll play anything that man makes, pretty much. But like, I just very it's very weird to me that it's like stuff like that gets all thrown by the wayside. Fortnite, Fortnite, Fortnite. Everything was Fortnite. There's so many freaking Fortnite trailers. I'm like, I just want Fortnite to just crawl in a hole and just suffer. But it's never going away. This like solidified that Fortnite is never, ever, 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 ever going away. And never? it made me very, very depressed. <laughs> um, like while I was watching, I was like, oh my god, there's like Rocket League Fortnite and like Lego Fortnite. And I'm just like, I'd stop stop. Everything's just everything's the same. And it's like they just want you to play it's like you can play hold games in Fortnite. And it's just like this is just a nightmare. Like, <laughs> this is a dystopian night. Everything just looks the same. Yeah, that's what I heard of this it's big takeaway. Horrible. Well, that and that was the other thing, too. Besides, outside of Fortnite aside, all the other stuff was blending together, too. There was just so many games that looked exactly the same. And it was yeah. just like, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> it's just too much. Too much. I can't remember half the... I can't remember probably, like, 90% of the games that were shown. Because of how... Like my brain just can't retain that for that line. It just Look was it. a homogenous mess. <laughs> to me, it's not the end of the I, world because we just came out of the the perhaps the greatest game and or greatest year in gaming history. And I have a lot true. of catch up to true. do from that year. So if we could just have a shit year, that would it's be true. lovely. We, 
it's true <laughs> and we'll get into that probably in our gaming goals so it's definitely definitely something yeah uh for next year um oh, i would love to have like uh, no yeah. nothing i'm interested in in the new year so i could just focus on all the the backlog it's true that like I, there's not really all that much that i'm interested in next year. like like not like immediately pressing yeah um, i was looking at a list of games coming out i'm like uh i have like two that are really notable right now stuff could come up but to me, one of the biggest glaring there was there was two huge omissions in this game awards. One, any any sort of acknowledgement at like this might have been like the one of the best years in video games. This has been one of the roughest years for the industry as a whole in general. Mm-hmm. Layoffs. There's been like thousands and thousands of jobs lost across the industry. Studios closing down, just jobs being cut. Nothing about any of that. That, that would not even a mere mention there should have been something this is supposed to be a night that's supposed to be celebrating the industry but nothing about that yeah second thing there's no legacy award you know how in like previous years they've like they've really they've had uh awards about like uh important figures in in gaming history yeah they sort of highlighted different people nothing i guess that's gone now i don't know why because to me that was like one of the to me, that was like one of the most important things of the Game Awards. I I always felt, right? Because like it it made it feel like it was, it was actually like trying to be an awards ceremony, whereas this felt like you know, rushing past all the awards, rushing past all the awards. Everyone's got a hard time limit, hard time limit. Celebrity, uh, we'll indulge. Yeah. Celebrity, celebrity, celebrity. I was like sports. Timothy Chalamet is just randomly there. What the <laughs> hell is that? Where? Why? Why is he up there? Wonka himself. I'm like. This schlub, like, I know everyone thinks he's the most handsome guy. He's the most fashionable man ever. I don't care. I think he's a weird-looking guy. <laughs> I think he's a weird-looking like, guy. He's a weird-looking he He's a weird looking guy. And I think he, we, he's, he, why was he there? I loved him in what Dune. What talk about? Uh, nothing. <laughs> he literally didn't say anything. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> he, he, like... He got up there. He was introduced by his old gamer tag, which is very weird, by the way. Because oh. um, I think he used to have like a YouTube channel where he would, um, where he modded uh, Xbox controllers or something, or he modded like really? controllers. Oh. Yeah, apparently he did. I, this is something I didn't know. And uh, and so they used that gamer tag, and that was something that said that like mod controller mod king or something like that. I don't remember what the name is, but um, so he like got up there. I think he said like one thing and then he's like, all right, well the nominees for game of the year are, it was like, what was, why, what? It was so, it was so weird. It was like, he's, he is a really big star. Like, don't get me wrong, but it was just, it was, (laughs) it was very confusing. It was like, why is he the guy that's getting it? Why is it not like, could they not (laughs) afford to get like Hidetaka Miyazaki to come back? Like, did he not want to show up and come back and, this is like the whole the whole thing with the Game Awards now. It's just like it's feeling worse and worse each year that goes by, where we keep bringing like these celebrities in and relying on giving them so much time. It's, it's going back to the to the. This is the thing that's crazy is because when Jeff took over in 2014, yeah. that was one of the things he was trying to veer away from, and now it's like he's going back to it. It's so weird. I mean, there are. You can have ties to celebrities. Oh, Matthew McConaughey showed up randomly, by the way, which was also weird. I guess he's advertising some game that he's being a voice in or something. <laughs> but he got up on stage and he went, all right, all right, all right. And I was like, hey, well, you know, at least he did that. <laughs> it's so, it's very weird to see it sort of like re- reverting because I think it got to a really good sweet spot, I would say, in the late 2010s. It's only been like like the last two years have been a little bit like uh, on the like you're kind of starting to veer lose lose track of what made it great. Right, because it feels particularly in, this year. It feels in, insulting because they like they have their own lanes. Like this is supposed to be honoring video games, yeah. but we have to bring like in years past you bring these celebrities in to be like, oh yeah, I play video games back on the Nintendo. I play Mario Bros. You know, like they clearly. D- don't play video games <laughs> at all now and it's just like let's go, yeah. go up here and talk about well, this thing well like when uh, remember last year al pacino i was literally gonna finish al pacino like, what was he doing I there <laughs> i don't play video games <laughs> he even yeah. said it he's like i don't play it. but i watched my grandkids play it and it seems pretty neat there's something, like, it was something, there's something bad about the way like 
even some of these celebrities they bring them in the way they talk about games you, like you can tell they they kind of view it as a lesser yeah. thing it's like oh it's not my thing it's video games yeah. but my my kids like them you know it's like this is what we're doing for our, our yeah. game awards show you know you, it's like yeah, you have someone so going on the oscars saying they don't watch movies like do you remember the when um when freaking um when uh Vin Diesel it was a Vin Diesel showed up and they announced that horrible yeah. fantastic if, uh, fantastic was it fast fantastic fantastic fast I don't know yep. <laughs> he announced that Fast and Furious game that was <laughs> so terrible it ended up being it looked bad it looked yeah. bad and apparently it was j- as bad as it looked so yeah um but it's like anyway yeah, jeff just eats it up now he's like let them have all the time like you were saying they're they're playing people off but the celebrities get all the time they want you know <laughs> it, it's a... there's gotta be a there's gotta be a better balance i mean like honestly there there has to be i i understand that it's expensive i understand that like a lot of these companies are like the whole reason they can do this at all is because these companies are paying money to get that time to, to show off their trailer. I understand that totally. So you gotta you gotta show off games. I mm-hmm. I'm not saying get rid of trailers because I I there was a freaking blade game announced and it looked awesome. I am so excited for that blade game. But I mean do we need that many trailers that look the same? Uh, whatever. 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 I get it. There's just gotta be more time spent on the games. That's that's really my thing. I, I there's got to be a better balance that's found somewhere in there. Yeah. Some people have suggested. Some people have suggested splitting it off, splitting it off into doing an awards night and then the like winter game fest or something like that on another night. I don't know how necessarily how I feel about that because I, I while I think that would help with time, I don't necessarily. I I don't know. I, I like to me it's like is. Two nights is real. That's a lot. That's a lot of a commitment. It's a huge commitment for for us because Summer Games Fest usually like is like has like one big event and then it's just like a bunch of other like mini events. But like for us watching, that's a huge time commitment because that's like two extra two events that you have to sit down and watch. Um, it's a big ask for all the developers because they have to take two days off basically to come do this glitz glamour crap. Yeah, and it's just like uh, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know if that can feasibly. I like. I like that sound of it, but I, logistically, I don't know how well that will work. If mm. if that's that's just I've heard some people float that idea. Um, I also heard some people like criticizing, like why why are these people why are they why are they wearing suits? You wouldn't expect like video game people to be wearing suits, and I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, <laughs> Have you ever heard of dressing for an occasion? Yeah. Dressing up, dressing. Uh, the whole point of the game awards is to make it feel more professional. It's to to to, to show off that like this is a serious, right? I mean, industry. The, the last thing we need is these celebrities coming out wearing an NES controller shirt, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's some, and some jeans. Like, oh, someone, why are they, why aren't they wearing that? I'm like, what the hell do you mean? Why aren't they wearing that? Like, that's what that's the last thing that I want somebody wearing Mm-mm. to be wearing. So. Yeah. yeah, and it's just anyway. we gotta get our priorities straight here. If you really, Jeff, if you're if really the heart of it all is the video games, you want love the video games. Maybe let's put some more thought into getting some like some bigger trailers. You know, we, there were moments in other game awards where there were definitely a lot more memorable trailers, especially like the, you know the Smash. They had the Persona reveal that was fun, but. Uh, mm. And also the fact that it's like whenever they're like the game awards coming up and you'll have like the top presenters or like, you know, all the celebrities. It's like it's like Channing Tatum, uh, Margot Robbie. It's like <laughs> these are the kinds of names they'll have at the top. It's like, what do they have to do with the games? What am I watching here? It's like <laughs> wow. it's, you're simultaneously yeah. you're not getting the people who just watch movies and don't care about games. You're not getting them because of these people. And you're also kind of turning yeah, off people who are there for the games. Cause it's like, what, what am I right. going to go watch? Whatever, whatever generic celebrity talk about this. Yeah. Or so, I mean, Hey, I, I would, 
I'd take any excuse to, to see Margot Robbie again. Margot though, Robbie. To be honest, I'd, I'd, <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd be okay with her showing up for any awards show. Let's be, let's be perfectly honest about that. But, like, they're so tuned up. So. They would have Margot Robbie she would come out and she would talk. She would literally just talk about the Barbie movie. She wouldn't have any game tie in. It would be like, yeah. okay, <laughs> and here's here's the trailer you know, for Barbie. I'm, here's a trailer for <laughs> Bar- Barbenheimer yeah. part two. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, I mean, speaking of that, I, yeah, yeah, I share I shared that that video with you. It was a pretty cool interview they had. Uh, it was awesome. Yeah, Jillian I Murphy listened to that and today. Margot Robbie together. Cool. Yeah. Worlds collide, Barbenheimer. Yeah, Maybe. it was great. I love that. It's cool. I mean, I like Good these these whole actors on actors uh, videos are. It's a cool series in general. Mm-hmm. I watched a couple of them. It's cool actually. Getting, yeah, I was gonna watch actors talking to each other. Yeah, I was. I wanted to watch the uh, after the, probably tomorrow. I'll, I'll throw on the um, new one. So there was one where, where it was uh, with uh, Robert Downey Jr. and um, oh, what's his name? Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I want to watch that, that one That'd too. be great. Yeah. But there's because there was so. another one. I think it was the same channel. They did like an actors roundtable. It was like a random assortment of like. It was like Adam Sandler. I forget who else was in there. It was like a random mix of actors that like <laughs> never seen interact before in my life. I'm like, all right, cool. But okay, so before we uh, move on, do do you want to address the completionist? Uh... Yeah. So Rest in that. Peace. Yeah. So personally, so I I'm just I'm just gonna say this straight out. I don't think his response was as bad as Carl Jobs and Mudahar seems to think it was. Um, he, I still, uh, I, I tried, I actually, I legitimately tried to watch Carl Jobs second response, like his response to the completionist response. And I turned it off like two minutes in because he already lied about what Gerard said in, in one of the things where he, he characterized that Gerard was apologizing. He's like, Basically, he, the way he phrased it was that Gerard was apologizing to people. It like if you felt sorry, it, like he was sorry. What was the way it was phrased? It was something to the degree of like, um, like I'm sorry that you felt that way. But if you actually listen to what he said, that's not what he said at all. He did not. That was that was not the way he phrased his apology. His apology was specifically geared towards like I'm sorry to you to those of you that like felt hurt by the stuff that I said and, and did and how I misled you. Like I, I apologizing to the people who felt that way. It wasn't, I'm apologizing that you felt that way. Like, I'm sorry you felt that way. That huge semantic difference there. And I'm like, oh, you, you can't even get that right. I can't trust the rest of your video to, to be, to be like objective in any sense. And then the clip that was being shared around was when uh, it was towards the end of it where where Gerard was basically like I, like I'm pursuing my legal options and then it was just Carl Jobs being like what a bitch and I'm like okay all right so I understand where, where we're really at here so it's not really about the issue anymore this is about I'm right and you're wrong so so b- before we started recording I did note that the phone call that they took. They apparently are releasing that now. Yeah. I don't know why they didn't release this. I don't know, like last week sometime. But uh, so I'm going to have to take a listen to that because that's going to be really interesting, too. Well, the- My perspective on this now is essentially. It's going to have to just play out in court now, in my opinion. I mean, like I, I I'm willing to give Gerard the benefit of the doubt, but I also don't really. I didn't think the response was as bad as they were making out to be. Do I think that he offered enough, like, proof? I don't know. I don't think anyone's really ever going to be satisfied uh, until, until, and hopefully, I actually hope that he gets audited too, because that's going to determine literally everything. If anything shady was going on, that audit is going to, is going to bring that out into the light. Yeah, Um, I I don't don't see it actually going to court. I just don't. Yeah. I don't think well, it really well, court, has, I, that's, it, has any legs to stand on yeah. when it comes to, like, it, the, it seemed pretty damning. Some of this, in stuff terms of like, in where, terms of like the, in terms of like the, um, what you mean, like in terms of like slander? Yeah, I don't see. Well, like, I don't. I no, no. I, 
more I was more in that I I guess misphrase. I think it's more important what happens when the audit happens because I I'm assuming there's been like thousands of people reporting them. Um yeah. So I I think that's all going to play out in the in the audit. And I, to me that's that's going to be the most important thing. I mean it's like a, it's a pretty bad look like the clips he brought up of him saying like, you know, it's all the bits and the the donations will go right to it and then meanwhile he says it's going to uh other things and then so the clip but the clip yeah, so yeah the clip of him the phone call is is kind of the most damning to me because he seems very much like he knows he's screwed and he's like desperately like is there anything i could do to like uh because uh, like basically this is gonna end my career like what can i do to make it make it better and he seemed really like to, to me i i don't Knowing the way people feel when they're being cornered, particularly he has two people that are talking to him that are against him, essentially. I don't... I agree. This is one of the reasons why I want to listen to the whole the everything in context, because I think that that's going to determine pretty much everything to me and how I and how I perceive the rest of this. So I don't I don't buy that as necessarily like that is his complete and total mindset about everything because of course that's something that he's going to be concerned about when they're talking to him about this of course that's something that's going to come up and it's like yes obviously the most important thing is that the money goes to to where it's supposed to go to and ultimately it did and of course everyone will always and forever say including me that probably wouldn't have happened unless well, there had been pressure so it's a, a it's a good thing that that it's a good thing that these videos came out because it put the pressure on them to actually donate the money. I think that's a net positive in terms of that sort of sort of thing. Everything else, though, uh, I, to me, is everyone's already made their mind up. Everyone hates him. Um, I, despite the fact that none of them um, know what running 401 C3s is like, um, none of them had... And, and this is to, to take... I was going somewhere with that, but I don't remember anymore. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I, I, to me, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough situation overall. I mean, I, I want to continue to give him the benefit, of the, like, not a benefit of the doubt, because like, there's always going to be a cloud, pretty much, regardless of anything that happens now. I mean, that's, that's kind of the unfortunate part about all this is that. You never really ever gonna trust him again, which is why, I mean, he he resigned from the board, and um, yeah, he might be done in general. I mean, I think he's just done in general. Also, I mean, like, well, that's the thing is like because these two guys have way larger audiences than he's ever had ever, um, and they're just gonna believe everything that they say. I mean, granted, their evidence is very persuasive. I listened to both the I listened to Mudahar and their first videos. But Mudahar is just like I don't trust him ever. I've never trusted him and I don't trust him now. And I probably will never trust him because he just has a way of he has a way of speaking that reminds me a lot of car car salesman where he doesn't actually know what he's talking about, but he does a really good job of making you think he knows what he's talking about. Uh Carl Jobs is a lot is a lot better in this regard, because he actually does research. <laughs> uh, so, but, I mean, to me, the, the, the follow-up video that was clearly clearly done to just get a sponsorship, and then the follow-up video where he's just throwing throwing mudslings at him, it's like, I can't, I can't take you seriously at that point. To me, the first videos are the most important bits of, bits of media that have been done about this thing. And anything after that is... Again, the audit's going to determine everything, I think, because he 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 comped up to the stuff that he did wrong. I I in right, in, in my opinion, it's just a bad look for him, though. It's uh, the fact that the money. Oh uh, yeah, the money was donated after he was called out. It's like okay, well, you could have just done that, <laughs> but it's like it took them him being called out on it to do it, and then the the call is really a bad look to me because it's like. Yeah. If you're going to say, oh, this is slander and all that, I don't think he would really be like pleading with them to not let this go public, uh, essentially. And like, what can I do to kind of prevent this? Because my career is on the line. Um, 
you know, I don't know. It's, it's yeah. Really bad. No, that's I want to I want to hear that whole phone call. So I'll probably listen to that tomorrow too. Um, uh, to address the bits thing, so that's actually something that I I've thought about. So I can see a case in what he's making where he's basically you could argue. And this is a terrible argument because I, I ultimately I don't think he should have been saying what he was saying. I think I think it was all it was all misdirection and miscommunication. In what he's saying that basically all the bits, all that stuff is all going to charity is still true in the sense that like all of that stuff is offsetting the cost of running the event technically means that that stuff is going to it's not like he's not hoarding like it's not he's not taking it for himself which is the way i interpret him saying you the way that he probably legitimized it in his mind when he's saying that if he if he wasn't just saying that and knew in his mind that where exactly it was going right. to because you're not going to, as somebody who's running an event, and this is something that Games Done Quick also does a really good job of doing, you don't say that. You do not say, oh yeah, this stuff is just going to offset costs. You don't say that. You never say that. And that's something Games Done Quick does as well. They use all of those, a lot of those like uh, subscriptions, bits, all that stuff. They'll loop that into the grand total at the end. But if you actually look at like their documentation, you know that a lot of that stuff is done to offset a lot of like travel fees, booking fees, all that kind of thing, like ad administrative stuff. So it's like not every single cent of that is going to charity. And, and people, th that's pretty well documented. People know that now. Like pe they've, that's been very public information. Like they haven't made bones about that, but they don't, also don't say that live on stream because you don't say that live on stream because no one's going to donate money if you do that. So you don't say that. Um, like, like to be perfectly honest, no one would donate anything if you're just saying, yeah, well, this is going to offset stuff and, and people will be like, well, that's, that, that, well, this isn't going to charity. Like, I'm not going to donate money that way. Hmm. So you, so like, I can see in his mind where he's, where he gets the idea that like saying that I still don't think he, I still think it is a very, a, it's a bad look because it is extremely misleading to, to say that type of thing. It was, it basically comes across that he's lying, which I mean, Heck, maybe he was. Maybe he was doing it intentionally to lie. Hmm. But I, I don't know, man. Uh, this, it's, it's, it's so messy. It's unfortunate. It's, and it's, it's very unfortunate. Yeah, his goose is cooked. Ultimately, like, is no yeah. real coming back from this. Yeah, I don't think so. It's uh, people are saying he had one more, uh, one more left of his uh, new game plus reviews too, right? He was one away from finishing this. Yeah, he's one away from finishing it. Yeah. You think Greg is somewhere like? <laughs> What's good? Boy. He's like, yes. That to me, that to me is another thing that 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 really kind of feels like. Was it? Was the timing like? It does feel a little too perfect. Greg's that behind this. Done like that. <laughs> no, Greg. I don't know about. I don't know about any of that. But, but like to me, it's like you couldn't have waited like. <laughs> just, let him get the, just, just let him finish his series man <laughs> like no they couldn't yeah. let him they couldn't let him complete it they couldn't let him complete it yeah. <laughs> that's right i heard people saying that yeah his his own uh, what was it his, yeah, his own undoing made him not complete it in the end no yeah. is he I always liked I liked his videos, but I hadn't watched them like actually watched any of them in years. I was always planning on catching up. I was a pretty pretty religious watcher. I yeah. watched pretty much every video he's he's ever done. Some of the sponsorship ones I just didn't care about, but yeah. So this comes yeah, as a pretty big so... hit to me. I mean, obviously, obviously, I'm kind of still a little bit on his side, but like, I mean, I don't think that like you shouldn't necessarily take my word for it. Obviously. I do not have a majority opinion. The internet is very much against him. Yeah. They're not going to listen to anything he has to say. I think even if the audit proves that he didn't do anything illegal, which is really at this point, really the only thing that matters because like everyone was already lied to. The money's been donated. Yes, it sucked. Yes, it was horrible that it stayed on, stayed on to now, but now ultimately the only thing that really matters was not any of that stuff because he already apologized for lying. He already apologized for misleading. 
Now the only thing ultimately that matters is the stuff that was kind of levied and implied in those videos was that he was actually committing fraud. Right, but people So say that, that's what the audit's going to have to figure out. But what people would also say the damage has, has been done and that the money sitting oh, there Oh, yeah, all I mean, he's never going to... But the money sitting there all this time would have been worth a lot more if it was actually donated when... Well, because of... Was of yeah, but, you, but here's another thing. You can't predict inflation. Like, the dollar was awesome for, for most of those years. Inflation only really hit hard, like, the last couple of years. So, know, like... But... I'm not a professional at this thing, but he just donated it. Like, if he was, if it's because it was made. Yeah, he public. donated it now because of pressure. He yeah. donated it now because of pressure. Because of pressure. It's. Right, but it's arguable so, that, like, the donations could have eventually, had they raised more money, and maybe inflation, maybe the dollar got stronger. Who knows? Maybe in a couple of years, the dollar's going to be really strong again. Not necessarily like inflation's going down, but the dollar might actually be worth more might do more in terms of the research that it would fund and they would have more money at that time, but we're probably, that's never going to happen now. Yeah. So here's the thing. All that being said, there's some pretty amazing charity events that other YouTubers have been running. Those ones are legitimate and you can tell the, you know, they're legitimate because the people that they partner with are all like well-known organizations. They're, they're directly involved. Um, so I think I think like Jack Septify just had a had a fundraiser that made like it raised like six million dollars or something in like twenty four oh, hours. Yeah. <laughs> it was insane. Yeah, he's doing so, that. He's always doing that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So at yeah. least there are some people out there that are a little bit more above board. And I think I think it still just goes down to a, a case of in my opinion, I think again the audit would will be able to maybe potentially determine what they were actually using the money for but like to me it just comes across as he didn't know what he was doing he was just a board member he wasn't in terms of the treasurer he wasn't in terms of the charge of the finances people in his family in my opinion probably he's to me it comes hard, strongly across that he's covering for people in his family who actually fucked up really bad here that's what it comes across to me as. It's his dad and his brother that probably screwed up because they. He says that he didn't know. Oh, I froze there for a little bit. Yeah. He. He said that he didn't know the money was being donated until like last year. Like was still like there until like last year. Because he's not. He's not like in charge of the books. He's on the board, but like that doesn't mean that he knows every all the financial stuff. A lot of times, board members are actually kept away from that information. So, uh, or can potentially be and different, different organizations it all depends on a lot of different things, but we've talked too long about this. Um, it just sucks. Everything about this situation is, sucks and is awful and I hate the internet. So, but Hey, at least the money got donated. At least he got found out. And, uh, well, I hope you're happy. There's going to be a lot less money going to <laughs> going there now. Not that there was money directly funneling the money in there, anyways. There. I the guess, money wasn't there. Yeah, money wasn't there. But now there's going to be less because they're just never going to run it again. So, well, I guess I don't know. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Everything about it sucks. I hate it. I mean, when you're doing a charity thing, you got to be on top of that, you know. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna yeah. Be held accountable. Yeah. Really. It's uh, unfortunate. So I mean, if any more major bombshells drop. We'll, maybe we'll probably we convene, we'll be here. But... The audit. We have to look at the audit when that when that comes out. If we'll, we don't we'll hear anything, I that. mean, it's probably not a good look for him. I mean, if, if he just goes off yeah. into obscurity, you know. It, I think he kind of has to regardless uh, now, right? I mean, like, what's he gonna do? I mean, if, if he has, post on if YouTube, he has some like huge truth. Uh, I don't know. And, you know, like Pro Jared huge did his thing, bomb. like, but and it's not. It's not that. Well, this situation. was his chance to do. This was his chance to do that. I felt that he did... I felt his response was strong, but it also wasn't, like... It wasn't also definitive at the same time, if that makes sense. Whereas Jared's was extremely definitive. Yeah. It was, like... And there was still damage yeah. done on the on the Jared thing, of course, but he was able to at least keep yeah. doing stuff. 
but it's not going to be yeah. the same for Gerard because he's like, he's literally admitted to certain things, and it's a bad look in in general. I don't know. It's not like he, he's not, he's not, like Gerard's not coming out saying this isn't like this didn't happen. I didn't do anything yeah. wrong. This is complete fabrication. But at the same time, he's trying to be like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna take legal action. I don't personally buy it that he's gonna actually do that. I think it was kind of like. Just it was a for, little bit of a bluff. It's probably that, yeah, bluff. that was probably a bluff. I mean, like, I, I don't doubt that that is has been considered as a legal option with him and his legal team. I don't doubt that for a second, but I don't think I don't buy that there's going to be a, any moving forward with it. Slander lawsuits never really go anywhere, anyways. It's really difficult to to, to yeah, do much of anything when it comes to that. And like I said, with the call, like I don't think he would do a call like that if he really had like this hard hitting. Like he knew, like he had the the evidence was on his side more than anything. So, well, again, I think I think listening to the full call will probably it will probably reveal quite a bit. That's why they felt confident enough to release the whole thing. So. Mm-hmm. And he's already going to be taking enough of a hit. I don't think he's willing to go through the legal fees to potentially have an even worse uh, look when he loses a case, too. So Yeah. All right. Well, that's that. I, I think that's it for our, our drama roundup for the evening, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we look forward to the future. All right. And uh, <laughs> so... Let's talk about. Uh, I wanted to first talk about what are some goals we have for uh, for the channel. What, what are some personal goals you have for the channel in the new year? Whether it's like broadly speaking or, or specific things you'd like to do. Um, um, I'd like to have. Well, this is our fifth year going. On our fifth year. Fifth now, year, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think. I think a good goal generally to have for the channel is to try to do some kind of in-person thing yeah i think i think that's a good goal to have that's what um I, that's my thing i want to do a, so, our five-year anniversary spectacular i want to yeah i would like to do a big thing like a big series of videos celebrating that you know i think that's that was my first thing i had on my list for sure That'd so be that'd be pretty great. If we can make that happen around the the middle of next year, that'd be cool. We'll see what yeah. we can do. But uh, regardless, be in the planning stages of it pretty soon. But yeah. I think that's something that's that's definitely a goal that I have. But like, not only that, but like I I know it's something that we say a lot. As I we've said it a lot. I think we've probably said it in past years too. But like more guests. Like I want. I want more people on. We, we I know we already are kind of in in the works for getting some other people on, uh, to to come on and 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 hang with us and and talk about stuff. Yeah. But uh, that would just be just be more more fun, more more fun to do. I want to get us more and more closer to like a fine tuned machine. Where right now we're, we're dealing with constant technical issues, uh, and, yeah. and things that are holding us back in different ways. And a lot of the times it's because of my computer, and obviously I don't have the the money to to fully invest in that right now. But I would like to be able to to do that to have a computer to where I no longer have to worry about can we do this thing, <laughs> like, or what's a workaround yeah. to maybe do this thing uh, in a less demanding way. Like I'd like to be able to just like the possibilities are endless, you know. The, I want the equipment to be the last thing I have to worry about. Everything's in place, and it's just like, okay, what do we want to do? Right. Rather than, like, can we do it? Can we do it? But, you know, in general, obviously, I want to – my goal outside of the channel in general, I want to get a better job and have more income in general, more sustainable to be able to do these kinds of things and improve on these things, so – Hopefully we can get there, and uh, just keep going up. And I wanna, I wanna do more variations on things and uh, more variety on the channel. As always, you know, we have our our series we have going on that we wanna keep doing, but also just add in some fun new variety. Always, it's always the always the possibility of doing a, a new movie series, maybe 
in the mix, but oh, for sure. I mean, I think that's we don't we definitely don't want to lose lose sight of the stuff that we already like doing. Um, so that's that's mm -hmm. definitely something to, to also consider and to continue. I'm just, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else specifically that I would I would like for the channel, but I think I think you pretty much nailed most everything on uh, on the head. I would say mm -hmm. everything else I would I would be thinking of. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, um, new, uh, there's not like the most movies I'm looking forward to next year, but recently announced Kung Fu Panda 4. I mean, we, we kind of review the Kung, Kung, <laughs> Kung Fu Panda, Panda movies Pan at some Kung point. Panda series? I've, I've yet to see three. I've never seen three. So, you know, I have, I don't, I don't really is... remember much of it though. So it'd be good to watch through them all again. The first Kung Fu Panda is one of my do. favorite movies. I love. I like. I can't get enough of that movie. It's timeless to me. It's a, it's a pretty great movie. It's a pretty yeah. great movie. But I mean, um, we'll, we'll bounce around. I want to. I want to talk about like goals for things, but also like what yeah. things are coming out next year that we're looking forward to. So since it's probably like a minor thing, are there any movies that you're looking forward to next year? D June Part Two. Um love to see the first one the, the spider-verse sequel i think is still slated for next year yeah um i'm just trying to think if there's anything else that's like boom i really need we've to go got, see we've, that we've got four i wrote down that are our sequels to things we reviewed on this channel that are okay. potentially coming out joker really? 2 oh, okay joya do yeah or whatever it's called <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a sequel to Joker potentially. We've got Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire coming at the probably the end of next oh, year. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, was this supposed to be coming out like this year or something uh, too? Yeah, maybe it's not originally. The end of next year. It was supposed it was, like, to, it was supposed to be strike. December this year. Yeah. Yeah. Right strike. We also have uh, Sonic the Hedgehog three. Is that really slated for next year? I think so. And wow. last but not least, Mufasa, the Lion King. Oh, get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> got it. And speaking of which, like we need, our live action Disney game was not. We need to get back on that. So that's that was actually one thing I wanted to mention is that we need to go back because we were gonna planning on doing this. Let's mm -hmm. go back to the back catalog of our live action Disney. We gotta go back and just to to enjoy. It. Get rusty in here, and we gotta. Uh, yep. I still want to do like some redemption, like Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio was something I wanted to do for like think, some Pinocchio. I think that's something. I think that's what we do need to do. That Peter Pan redemption would be yeah. fun. I think as well. Um, yeah. And uh, in general, I have like a couple specific different movies I would like to touch on if possible, but you never really know what that. In terms of the new releases, there's not much more than that. There's the the Borderlands movie that's supposed to be coming out next year. <laughs> I don't know if that's anything. Well, you know, I know I'm, yeah, I'm more I mean, the Borderlands maybe. fan, it, but I don't. It might be kind of fun. But <laughs> also, j j everything about it I that I've heard about it, just I'm just like scratching my head. Yeah. Like casting Kevin Hart as Roland. <laughs> yep. It's the most confusing <laughs> choice I think I've ever heard. <laughs> um, but. Sure, I guess you know. But yeah, other, we could probably expect the the sequels or probably ones that we would review. Um, yeah, new Disney stuff like Inside Out Two is coming out, right? So right, Inside Out Two. Okay, that's definitely something I'd I'd want to go see. I don't know. I don't remember I don't, what other Disney things are specifically coming. I don't, I don't know what Marvel stuff's coming out next year. I kind of have sort of like Ugh. I've completely fallen off the Marvel uh, train. So <laughs> yeah, you have. You really have. Even the Star Wars train. I'm behind on the Star Wars series, and yeah. Well, hey, Jonathan, it was just announced literally today, the day we're recording this, is that uh, Jonathan Majors got got dropped. <laughs> he was like a big. Uh, he was like a big thing. He's gonna be the big, the big new hot stuff, and now he's he blew he's it. done he blew after it. he was convicted. He, I mean, well, yeah. Assault in the third degree and yeah, harassment. Everybody in the makes second mistakes, degree. though. I think we should give him another shot. Get the heck out of here with that crap. Mm. 
<laughs> there's the thing you know in innocent until proven guilty that's what our court system is all about and uh well he was he was mm -hmm. yeah, he's yeah he's convicted so you know get him out of here well deadpool 3 is next year i think as well i still need to watch deadpool 2 actually deadpool would be pretty great deadpool's gonna be fun i think yeah, deadpool 3 is the i think is one of the only things that's slated for next year i think it is i think it's the only it's the only movie slated for next year so mm -hmm. hey looking forward to that all right that'll be fun what about any uh video games next year you have any like i don't actually i had i have two that i'm looking forward to literally two that i wrote down other than that you know there's nothing really that stood out to me the big one for me is a, is a game that, of course, released 20 years ago. as Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. Uh, <laughs> I'm just looking forward to having an excuse to play that game again. Um, yep. And the other one is Princess Peach Showtime. Of <laughs> course. It's a good one. It just yeah. sounds like not yeah. a real thing, but yes. I'm lo so yeah. looking forward to Princess Peach Showtime uh, coming to Their Apple TV+. Plus handful of things for me handful of things for me right. uh there's final fantasy 7 rebirth biggest <laughs> thing i'm looking forward to big time um persona 3 reload yeah um i don't know if i'm gonna find the time so early next year i think for the first few months next year is all gonna be catch up for me i don't know persona 3 no reloads coming out in february i don't i don't know if i'm gonna have time to do that uh but we'll see uh, another big one for me. Um, I don't know if there's any other like huge ones. I do know um, Princess Peach Showtime and like your two. That those are two big ones. Oh, Star Wars Outlaws. That might be my first like you like true form Ubisoft game. Yeah, like that that game um, did really interest me watching the, the gameplay, yeah. but. At the same time, I haven't yeah. played the two like big Star Wars games, you know, that have come out in recent times. So I really should play those. Yeah. Yeah, but they don't. That's not. There's not really related though. So yeah, but it's they, like there's no sequel. There's no sequel. But there's nothing about that game to, that's to like that. compels me to play that over those games. I have, I have Jedi Fallen Order here waiting to be played. So if I'm looking for a Star Wars, I should still play that. I would like to play. Yeah, that. I you know fair. Fair enough, I suppose. Um, some other stuff, uh, other like niche stuff. There's like Unicorn Overlord is a game that's coming out. I'm looking forward to. Oh yes, I remember that one. Um, Shantae Advance. That was the unfinished Shantae game mm -hmm. that they're finishing and releasing next year. That's pretty exciting. Um, a couple things I'll, I'm keeping my eye out on. Um, Destiny 2, The Final Shape. Uh, Destiny has had a very, very rough year this year. Um, they, they were affected by some of those layoffs uh, that I was talking about earlier. So, But that's still a game that I'm kind of, kind of looking at. Black Myth, Wukong, and Rise of the Ronin are both games I'm interested in. Black Myth, Wukong in particular is one that I'm, I'm more looking, looking toward. Okay. Um, okay. And then keeping an eye also on Foam Stars, Foam Star Runner, and Foam Stars and uh, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And the only reason that I'm saying that about that game, which I think a lot of people have already written off, uh, I've I have a friend who has played in uh, been playing the closed alpha or closed beta. I think yeah. it's a closed beta technically, and. Um, Sounds pretty good. Not gonna lie, it actually sounds pretty decent. Um, just you just have to keep in mind that it is a looter shooter. You just have to kind of keep that in uh, mm -hmm. keep that in mind. But uh, you know, I I think uh, you know based on what I've seen about it, I like the idea of the story very much. I'm really looking forward to to just hanging out with, with with a friend and playing it. It's not a game I'd like play by myself. It's very much like a game I'm gonna play with people. Um so that's just something I'm I'm maybe looking at potentially doing. Mm -hmm. But 
that's about it. Do you have any uh, gaming goals for the new year in mind? If we thought about it ahead of time, Rusty on the Otaku Brothers last year had a, had a pretty fun idea where it was like, he was like, I need to beat three Switch games, two RPGs, one. I forget how it was exactly. Yeah, I, I I'm, I'm not good. I'm not good. In, I'm not good enough to do that. <laughs> I have no idea. Your ass. Like I, I just can't. I, I can't make. I can't make up my mind about stuff like that. No. I just, it's. I'm just not that. I'm just not that good at, at doing that kind of thing. I don't. I guess I just don't have enough granular. Well, here's the thing. I want to finish. I want to actually beat more games. I started a lot of games this year, and I've beaten so few of them. Like mm-hmm. I haven't beaten Final Fantasy 16 yet, and I'm probably not going to for the game for the year ends. I started Spider Man 2. I'm actually currently working on that game. I've also started Resident Evil 4. Currently working on that game. But like I started Tears of the Kingdom, didn't beat it. Um, I wanted to play Cyberpunk, uh, tw- the the new expansion that came out for that, but I actually haven't played the original game yet. And I also haven't played the. Um, I also have I, one of the things I was going to do. I was actually going to watch Edge Runners, the anime, first. And I haven't done that yet. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, there's like, it's. I want to finish more games. Um, I want to actually like beat games more. I want to try to do a better job at like. I like trophy hunting. But I want to see, like, find the right games to, like, sit down and really concentrate on trophy hunting for. Um, I've had a lot of fun actually doing that towards the end of the year here. I've done that with a couple of games. It's been fun. Yeah. But I don't know if there is. Believe it or not, this year I've finished more games than I have in the past six years at least. Mm. Um, Well, that's good. Because I've tracked how many games I've beaten every year since 2017. And this is the most I've beaten is 19 out of uh, all the years I've tracked. Which is, I mean, some people are like cracking down like 50 games like they're crazy out here. But for me, that's pretty Yeah, big. I don't know about that. But I didn't get a lot of the big uh, new releases, of course. So, yeah, my next, the next year I'm going to do a lot of cleanup because 2023 had a lot of heavy hitters. Ones that some I've dabbled in and some I haven't played at all. Final Fantasy 16, I haven't, I didn't finish. Um, mm-hmm. Hogwarts Legacy, I only played like a couple hours of. Baldur's Gate 3, I didn't get to play. Um, and um, Tears of the Kingdom, I played uh, several hours of, but didn't finish or get near finishing. So these are just some of the ones from, from this year. Theatrhythm, Final Bar Line. So, yeah. There's a lot I'd like to get to, but one random goal that I just thought of that I've set for myself now is in 2024, I want to catch up on Telltale Games games. Okay, that's that's a big ask. I don't know how many of them you've missed out on. I've been behind, like, because I want to rekindle my love for that, because I really love Telltale Games and those kinds of games, but I just stopped playing, like... For a couple of years now, it's been a couple of years since I've really played a, a game like that, and so it's basically well, since how many? I mean, it's basically from Bat- play... Batman up until okay, now. Okay, so you played up to the Batman. So it's a bunch. It's a lot. So did you do Minecraft Story Mode? Nope, and I played a couple episodes, but yes, that was. I, I believe that was before Batman. Oh. Did you, get, did you do the Game of Thrones one? Do the Game of Thrones one. Uh, Tales from the Borderlands? I did Tales from the Borderlands. Did you do all of the Walking Dead seasons? Because the, they did a final season. I know. Nope, I, I didn't finish season three, and I didn't do the final oh, okay. season. Okay, so there's one there. Um, I think Wolf Among Us 2 is actually still bound for next year. Yep. Yep, so the Wolf um, Among Us 2 is coming out next year, supposedly, so that would be nice to actually yeah. be playing them leading up to that. Yeah. Because I love the Wolf, Wolf Among Us. I guess they did a... I didn't even know this. They did a Minecraft Story Mode Season 2. Yeah, yep. And there's a Batman um, Season 2, I think. I know there's two Batmans. Yeah, Batman and Batman the Enemy, enemy Within. Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, there's a Guardians of the Galaxy. 
Yeah. This is the real big problem that they just they just way too many things, way too many licenses mm -hmm. that they just couldn't afford. So yeah, really unfortunate. What so I'd like to catch up on those that I also would like to uh, catch up on Life is Strange as well. Because I only played the first Life is Strange, but would like to play the rest. There's a The Expanse that just came out this year. Yes. A Telltale series, The Expanse. Wow. I didn't even know about that. Crazy. So yeah, I would like to, I would like to get back to those and and just that genre in general. Like you know, if we could throw in like mm. more story based games, you know, there's like maybe around Halloween time we could do the the quarry or something. You know. Yeah. Um, I have Detroit I, Become I, this, Human. You know, there's a lot out there. There's there's one that I thought of. I want to play through and beat three games and series that I've never played games in before. Okay. Name every game so you've played. From Assassin's Creed, uh, Yakuza. <laughs> Alphabetically. Um. Let's see. I'm just trying to think of some other ones here. Um, Uncharted. Uncharted. Uh, I would count God of War, but I have actually played the I played the 2018 one, so I guess that doesn't count. Uh, I've forgotten one of um, my my games I'm looking forward to, which is of course going to be on your list of uh, series to get to. Touch Detective. Sure. All right. Um. Let's see. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Touch Detective are are some games on the DS that I loved when I was young. I haven't played them in years. But there's a new, like, uh, re-release of them. I think coming out on the Switch. So I think I think finally I think I this next year is going to have to be the year that I finally beat the Final Fantasy Thirteen full trilogy. Finally beat Lightning Returns because I've never done that. Mm -hmm. So that's probably going to be something that I have to do. I just I ha have I'll to. have to I have to do it. I have to. <laughs> can, can we vow so. to review Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door? Um, I think that's a pretty reasonable thing to, to vow to do. I just want to give it a 10. That's all I've come to do. <laughs> I just want to give a game a 10, you know? <laughs> what if the remake, you know, what if it's not if very it's good? it's ass, that would be amazing. It's still a 10. Yeah, it would be kind, of a, it'd be kind of impressive. My favorite game to make it. Yeah, I well here's the thing, they didn't do that with Mario RPG, so they did not butcher that game. Um that's a different studio working on it, but you know. Yeah. Um I was trying to think if there's any other gaming goals. It would be nice if we could play Little Nightmares uh two. You know, the little we got a couple sequels of yeah. those. Yeah. For us. I'd like to maybe get back. To, I, I have tons of Call of Duty games stacked up, waiting to be played. Uh, isn't there a Luigi's? Is, aren't they making Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon? Aren't they porting that to the Switch? They just are. There's, that's what everybody asked for. That's what, that's what everyone <laughs> wanted. <laughs> everyone asked for. It's amazing. That's what, that's what everyone wanted. I mean, it's a good game, but it, like, um, it looks like ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's like here's your remake and it's like okay that's just a 3ds game right on the switch yeah, yeah. Huh? you gotta squint and try <laughs> to see a difference it up a little bit. they'll yeah. use to spruce it up a little more well no that just to me that just is the testament to how good that game looked on the 3ds you know, you know what I was... it did it was one of the best looking games on that console you know what i started playing on uh or just started playing recently is pokemon violet on the, on the nintendo switch yeah, I I've been meaning to I've been meaning to play and that. It's fun. It's been fun, but what's annoying me is it kind of looks like ass, and I'm just kind of tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> it does kind of look that. It does kind of look like ass, but that's it's like you know, it okay. really bothers me. Like this huge juggernaut of a series, like looks completely unpolished. Yeah. Every every new game that comes out now, it looks like like ugh, like uh, still everything's <laughs> clipping in and like it looks ugly. Like you're riding around in this Pokemon, and I don't even like. The, like the designs in general but let alone like the fact that things are like the backgrounds are loading in like slowly and, and things are not not running smoothly game game, <laughs> game freaks not ready for this yeah, ready. They, they haven't been ready for the last six years to, to develop for <laughs> for these consoles man because it's like it's like a, it feels like, it's a fun game 
but it just does not feel like like a like a first party like like this is a Nintendo's like one of the Nintendo's best selling series yeah. ever. Well, that's that's it. It's not technically it's it's a I guess a it's, sort of first party, but it's a Pokemon company. It's Game Freak. Yeah. It's not in house Nintendo EAD. But it's Nintendo so. through and through. You know, it's like it it's just so different. If you look at like a, a Mario game, uh, like the polish given to that. Well, that's because that's because again, that's in house. I know. That's in house. It's still held up in the same on the same level as those kinds of things. It's like Pokemon. To a, I mean, to a degree, but like Nintendo doesn't have to do any advertising for it because the Pokemon company does all of that. <clears throat> that's why they have their own directs and everything like that. Yeah. So it's like it, it's its own. It it's almost like its own. It's its own juggernaut at this point, really. Yeah, it doesn't like, make it any less disappointing. You get a oh whole, yeah, you got a whole well, company. Yeah, I'm not board. saying it doesn't. <laughs> not saying it doesn't. Not saying it doesn't because it is. But the game seems other than technical difficulties, the game seems pretty sweet. Yeah. You know, aside. It is fun. It's fun. There's something about um. Because it's a very open world feeling Pokemon game. You know, mm. you kind of go in any order. Do there's a bunch of different things, not only just the gyms to do, other things you have to work on, and you can go in any order. Mm. And in some ways, I've kind of like I kind of miss the more linear stuff. You know, it's kind of overwhelming at times. So there's like so many different ways to go. <laughs> you know, so you but, like the you like the as as uh, as they put it as Rusty and Ryan put it in their Sword and Shield, where you're going in a little literal straight line oh, towards yeah. the end of the game. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love it. But it's just it's it's almost like you know this is everything we wanted from Pokemon is like an open world game, you know. And we've gotten it a couple of different forms now with like Legends Arceus and and this in different ways. But it's but it's like the it's the gaming industry is so oversaturated with open world now, so it's kind of lost its charm. It's like every game yeah. is open world some extent now after the breath of the wild craze but i i think another goal that i think another goal that i should have so i should write these down so gaming goals mr gaming goals it's time for gaming goals it's time for gaming goals we're gonna check in gaming every goals. every month on the podcast to track our gaming goals so one is beat three games from series that I've never beaten before. And, you know, uh, if, if you don't know, we have a thing called the Gents Challenge we do in our, our game community. And that's a pretty easy way for us to probably push ourselves to and do That's an easy things. way to do something that. But I thought of another one, and that is to play and beat a game on every console that I own. Whoa, how many consoles do you own? That's going to be very difficult. Uh, you have to start getting rid of consoles if you're running out of time. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see. Um, Hell no. I've been meaning to replace. I've been meaning to replace my DS Lite for a long time because I it doesn't this. It's kind of jank. I think there was having some screen issues with it. Uh, obviously, I, I I want it because of the Game Boy Advance capabilities of that thing. Uh. So. Maybe I could get a maybe I could get one of those those sweet whatever emulating games, but regardless. So well, here's okay. Well, here's a question: Would you count like the virtual console, the Wii virtual console stuff, um, like the the online? Would you count those as consoles that I uh, every console I own? No, it's like, like I technically own games on. <laughs> No, I wouldn't. Yeah, I guess I, I guess you take. I, I would. Say, right. I would right, say. I would say if fair. you have it on the on the Wii or whatever, then that would just be the yeah. Wii. The Wii. You know. Well, okay. I mean, that's still pretty feasible. So I have like I have a PS2, a GameCube, a Dreamcast, a Wii, a Genesis, uh, a 360, a Wii U, PS3, a PS4, a PS5, an Xbox One. I know. Actually, I don't have an Xbox One. I have, an, I have a Series X, but I also own Xbox One games. So, I don't think I own a series, a single Series X game. So, how many consoles is that? It's like we're at eleven. Twelve. Yeah. Uh, well, it didn't include the 3DS, which also includes the DS. 
Well, Which do you, would also include do you not a own you own a DS still, right? So you have to play. <laughs> it's a DS. It's a DS Lite, but it's like it's kind of broken. It doesn't really work. Yeah, but you so. own it, so you gotta chuck I it quick, to or you gotta. Yeah. You gotta be a DS game. <laughs> well, I've too. got tons of DS. I own tons of DS games that I haven't played, so I, yeah. I would count. Oh, those I know as you like have DS no shortage, games. but you're getting a lot, yeah. double digits here. Sure. Yeah, I know. I know what I, I know. What I said. I said what I said. Yeah, a lot of those games are short, it. though. I can, I can, I can be, I can be short games. There's a lot of short games on those consoles. So, so that's about thirteen. That's a goal. Something it's like not that. necessarily. I want to just see how far I can get in that. Well, see, we're already hedging our bets here. It's, it's a goal. It's <laughs> not like a end all be all. It's just kind of however yeah. many. See, I think it's a good. I think it's a good goal to have. I think it's a good goal to have. I want to. I just because like variety is always the spice of life. So. Yeah, I mean, I haven't given nearly enough love to like i have tons of gamecube games and wii games and and whatnot to to play mm. um like i played a couple retro games this last year but mostly my focus has been on my never ending on my, my my backlog of like the triple a heavy hitters is growing and growing as well like this is the last of us um mm. persona 5 my my brother and i actually started playing that last year and we kind of fell off of it we haven't had a chance to revisit, but we were like we were going back and forth playing it. Um, and because my online was having issues, we were not able to play Borderlands. We wanted to keep playing uh, Borderlands Three. So there's a couple we've fallen out of. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, and there's like uh, Ghost of Tsushima. I would like to play Death Stranding. Uh, yeah, yeah, Ghost of Tsushima is like is like my probably the worst the game that I need to play the most because it was like my most anticipated game and I just didn't play it. It was it's bad. It's um, tough. You know what's crazy about the gaming industry now is like I was saying earlier I was kind of joking, but it's like I really wouldn't care if if the the twenty twenty four sucked for gaming because I have so many games that. You yeah. know, theoretically, if we if they just stop making games tomorrow, I would have like plenty of games to just last me oh, a lifetime. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> it's like so for sure. crazy. You can't keep up the 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 stack just keeps growing of of games I'm behind on, and it's nice. It's it's nice to have so many like almost infinite choices at all times, but it's obviously overwhelming as well when you have yeah. so many uh, things you want to you want to get to but yeah well my dad my dad's been freaking playing pikmin speaking of which oh you know i was kind yeah, of i was pikmin. kind of getting an itch for that you know i was hearing some pikmin music i was like should i try playing through them again you know because i've, I've yeah. dabbled in each one uh, except for pikmin 4 I, I've, and i've enjoyed them but the only one i ever i think the only one i ever beat was pikmin 1 and i didn't get all the ship parts in it i never did that that was one thing i mm -hmm. i always wanted to do so I wanted to get that. Like, so I, my dad bought Pikmin 1 plus 2. I like, all of a sudden I saw it. I was over at their house the other day and I saw it and I was like, wait a minute, this isn't mine. Did you go buy this? And he's like, yeah. Wow. I was like, why? Wow. <laughs> he's like, I don't know. It's, it look cute. It look fun. I was like, oh, are you, are you having fun? He's like, yes, it's very hard though. I'm like, yeah, the first game is quite hard. So. Yeah. Yeah. So are there, are there any games or ideas of like, if there could be a wild card game to come out, like what's a, a pipe dream or a wish list item that you would have for like, what if this game were to be announced and come out next year? What would you be a on? A new Mario for? game, new, new 3D Mario That's game. What I was thinking too. 100%. More specifically, you know, everybody wants the Odyssey 2. No, 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 no. It's Super Mario Sunshine 2. Coming, it's coming 2024. I, I don't know about I don't know about that, but <laughs> that's I, what I, I would. I'm want. down for. Hey, I'm down for whatever. I, I if they use Sunshine Two, Galaxy Three, Odyssey Two, I don't care. A brand new Skip thing. Galaxy that I've Three, never heard go to of. Galaxy Four. Yeah, yeah, just do Galaxy Four. Sure, why I not? I would love yeah. that. Just confuse everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Super Mario Galaxy just, Four. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then um, they're gonna release three yeah, I, later. It's like a, a Star Wars thing. I I'm really looking. I I, I to it's, me I it's a if done you deal. launch. Well, here's the thing. Oh yeah, is the Switch Metroid 2 Prime? We we didn't even talk about this. Metroid Prime Four. 
Motivate. We've heard so little about it that it's almost certainly going to be a launch title for yeah. the new console. Um, you think we're going to get some juicy new console I think, next year? I think I th- they have. Yeah, they, they have to, right? Don't they kind of have to? Maybe they just don't technically have to, but they <laughs> should. Yeah. They should do, do that next year. That should come out, I would say, October of next year would be like a really nice time to hit. I think they like to hit their consoles either in March or November. March, because that's the beginning of their fiscal year. And November, because that's the... Um, it's the holiday season, so obviously you get a lot of the holiday rush. People want the new console. Yeah, I think October would be a good time too. Um, I would like to see it come out maybe a little earlier, just to give a little extra lead in time to the holidays, because you know the supplies are going to be rough for this thing starting out. <laughs> it's always it always is. It's always a scarcity problem. So if we so. did a video probably almost a year ago at this point talking about what we would want in like a Switch Two theoretically, and yeah. um. Because I think we both kind of expect it to be a Switch-like console. Um, it would be suicide for them not to continue this brand. Yeah, I think. But I wonder what in, they in could some fix. form it might not be. It might not be like Switch, like, but it, it has to be something similar to it, right? It can't mm-hmm. be. You can't like supersede the the branding. I wouldn't be surprised if it's so, a Switch Two though, like actually Switch Two. Yeah. One thing I I would really like to be fixed. The new Switch. <laughs> One thing I really like to be fixed is the Joy Cons because they're pissing me off. Yeah. I'm trying to like I was enjoying <laughs> playing on the handheld mode, but now I refuse yeah. to play handheld mode because that my one is fucked up. He's he's always going left, <laughs> constantly, constantly just left constantly. control stick is going. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, I, I yeah they get bought a, they, a separate they get controller. Pretty so. easy. It's annoying, like the drift, it is annoying. and like even on like one of the pro controllers that I had was, was was fucked up too. I'm like, what's going on here? Uh, like I would like some more like reliable hardware. It would be nice, and and something. Obviously, we want I want to upgrade uh, on this capabilities as well. Something more comparable yeah, with the I mean, that's, four at least. Gotta gotta be it. Gotta be an inevitability. I mean, they they have to. That, that's the whole point of making this new console, in my opinion. You can keep most of the design choices. I think the Switch has such such an awesome like everything about it is like great, except for its its capabilities graphically. And that's why like you've seen other consoles sort of step in and try to and 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 sort of put their put their toes in the pool. And you've got. You know, you have Steam Deck has been a, I would say, like a, a, a semi competitor, but it's not really a competitor. It's a, it's still kind of a different market. Like mm-hmm. its goal is to play PC games on the go, um, and I mean, I mean, some of those PC games are also console games, but it, it's not it's not necessarily the same thing. It's not the same market. It has its own flaws in and of itself. Um, so I think, I think investing in the, in the power and maybe even a better, a nicer screen would also maybe not be the worst thing in the world. Yeah. So, so on release 3d, new 3d Mario, uh, I think uh, it's, I mean, Metroid is almost certainly going to be a launch title, but I think a new 3d Mario would be like massive new 3d Mario Metroid prime four and last but not least Donkey Kong. He's back. He's got to give me Donkey something. Donkey Kong is back. That's just it. That's the name of the game. Don- DK Don- is back. Donkey Kong is here. Yeah. Donkey Kong's back. <laughs> it's just a picture of DK's like back. Like he's. Ooh. Yeah, just rippling yeah, muscles. Yeah, DK's back. On the back. Yeah, it's rippling muscles. <laughs> DK's back. <laughs> DK's back. Um. You, you play as Mario <laughs> and Luigi as they navigate along DK's back. <laughs> <laughs> They would do. They would pull some shit like that. So that too. <laughs> be so awkward. Be so awkward. Leave it to Nintendo. <laughs> Leave it to Nintendo to make something really awkward. Um, you, you scratch his back, he'll scratch yours. <laughs> <laughs> he'll pound yours. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. But yeah, honestly, uh, you know, a new Donkey Kong Country would be great, or a new three a three D Donkey Kong would be a, an epic. I think it would be an epic release, break the internet type shit. Yeah. That's a... that's been rumored for a while. I'm, actually, that has been rumored that that's what the that's what the Mario team has been working on. 
Right. But like, I don't know if that is actually what they're working on or if they're doing a new 3D Mario. I, I mean, it's hard to say. They're cowards. They would never do it. But just imagine all three of those heavy hitters on release. Yeah, it'd be Metro pretty Prime 4, amazing. Mario Sunshine 2 and yeah. Donkey Kong's and... back. <laughs> Donkey Kong's back. <laughs> I mean, it'd be pretty. I would be. I'd be over the moon. I'd be fully I'd be seated up there. I'm there yeah. on release. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm there. I'm there all every day. What else? What are we? What else every are we missing? Week. Is there anything else for sorely missing? This should be coming out at that time. You know. Um, PS5 Pro. No. There's supposed to be pro versions of this console okay. showing up. I think. Oh, it's the modular version of the console. I don't care. I I, <laughs> I don't care. I don't Let me cares. enjoy my PS5. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I see yeah. eight games on the PS5. I played yeah. a couple of them. Let me just enjoy my PS5. And uh, it's still yeah. fresh to me. I literally got it this year to play Hogwarts Legacy, and then I played a couple hours of it. Yeah, they have... <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, it plays PS4 games real good. It's the, you don't have load times on those games anymore, which is pretty sweet. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. Like you can freaking play Bloodborne, and you don't have to worry about the game loading for like three hours. You just mm-hmm. it just loads in like two seconds. So that's you, nice. You know a game I've been getting back into recently. Uh, surprise, surprise! Is Animal Crossing New Horizons, and uh, Ooh. I've been rekindling my love for it fully. I'm like fully in now, back to my daily routine. And oh, that's it's, fun. It's mostly because I had gotten my girlfriend the game like a year ago like last christmas and she basically didn't Mm -hmm. barely touched it but then just recently a couple weeks ago she started playing and she's been all all into it now so i've been alongside her back on my island uh grinding out and i'm realizing just how much stuff i still have have to do like i've paid off all my loans and stuff but my island was far from finished of like what my mm. vision was so i have that to work on i've been either i found a website that had the whole catalog of all the items and everything so i've tracked whatever i have and i'm like i'm only after like a, over 100 hours playing i'm like a fraction of everything collected so i got a lot to work on but now i'm i'm like it's got me thinking in that space again i, I wonder when the next animal crossing w- will come out what that'll be like but I mean, it was seven years between New Leaf and uh, New Horizons, so who knows when that'll come? Yeah. There was some development on there was some development on um, New Leaf, like post launch as well. They did like Happy Home Designer and stuff with mm-hmm. with the game that came out, and so they were still doing like active development on yeah. Well, they on dropped New Leaf. Amiibo Festival as well. Well, we don't talk about that. So. <laughs> They made, all these, they made all of these assets for that game. Well, here's the thing. They, I think they used a lot of the assets they made for that game, and they, they just sort of imported that on the actual game that they were working on. I don't know. I, feel, I hope so. I, I almost felt like it looked that better on a... the Wii U. Like, like the, that visual style was really clean to me before they adopted the full New Horizon look. And they really let me down that because like, Animal Crossing had been on every new system release until we just skipped Wii U. And I thought Wii U was going to be a perfect fit for that as well, because you get the the touch. Yeah, with the Miiverse and everything. Miiverse. You had Miiverse. You, had the touch. And you could just yeah. have your inventory it, down there, nice and easy, stuff like that, and it would look so nice. It was a travesty. It was a travesty mm-hmm. that they didn't. But I mean, New Horizons was a phenomenon on the Switch for our, our COVID time. It was. Um, I still I look yeah. on my friends list and see all of us us on there. Look, I think. Think back of the times where we were all actively playing and whatnot. I still have a picture, a picture on my Switch of all of us. We took some pictures together. That was mm-hmm. fun. So it's like, I would like to recapture that again. Like it would get us a new Animal Crossing. Yeah, something like that. Clean out my island. My, I, I haven't been on my island in like three years, so it's probably like, yeah, it's they, probably like covered in. The people were telling me it had been two years and a month since I've been there. It's sad. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and I literally, I think that was like a one time playing too, and I hadn't played for yeah. several months before that, because I yeah. remember I played dedicated every single day for like three months straight, 
and then uh, as soon as I missed a day, I was gone. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> He's just like, I'm done. Yeah. This is it. We're out of here. But like I missed all like the big holidays and stuff, you know. And that's the whole fun of Animal Crossing yeah. too, is you can play during the holidays. So I'm glad to get back to be getting back to it because you know I'm such a huge Animal Crossing mm. fan. I've always felt bad that I kind of just dropped it, even though I did put over a hundred hours into it. It's just a lot more, a lot more fun to be had. So, mm. um, so uh, any any like uh, goals for any anything outside of gaming do you have in mind? For the new year yep oh yeah more anime more anime i mean that should be a goal for me too. I, I've, I've watched so watching. little i've watched so little of the new stuff there's so many shows there's like shows that just have just come out like even just like the last few weeks that mm -hmm. have been like free Rin is a show that's out right now that's that seems really great pluto just came out on netflix um i watched the scott pilgrim show that show is phenomenal and i 100 percent uh recommend that to any scott pilgrim fans um but like that's like a big thing for me is like watching more anime i, I did, i'm slacking I'm, I'm really slacking on that front but it's like it's not just that too it's like more tv show there's like more tv shows that i that i i'm only like halfway through better call saul i kind of took a i just sort of like stopped for pretty much no good reason so that's like that's that gonna be a, a show that I'm, yeah. Uh, it's just gonna be a show that I that I have to get back to, um, and and watch. I think I'm gonna try to finish out the year and and watch through Cyberpunk Edge Runners to try to finish out the year. It's only like ten episodes, so it should be pretty easy. Um, Arcane is another show that I really watch. It's not technically anime, but like. I've heard nothing but the good things about that show, and I've been, so I've been slacking yeah. on TV in general. Um, yeah. Like uh, most of the TV seasons I've watched this past year have been reality TV, so like I'm miss sorely missing my scripted shows. But speaking of reality TV, I do. Uh, I never mentioned this, but I had this idea that I do plan on doing. I want to do a solo video talking about, like almost like a reality TV roundup for the year. Because okay. there's gonna be a lot of stuff that I can't talk about with you, um, mm. and be able. To, I I think I might might do like a fun like ranking of all the reality shows I watched because I watched a lot this 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 year. Between uh, that could be that that could be fun though. Survivor, Big Brother, some other fun new shows, including Squid Game, The Challenge. I watched. There's a uh, a lot to rank in there. I heard that show is ass. <laughs> no, that's actually really good. It's actually really good. I, I don't believe you. <laughs> no, really I don't good. believe you. But in the end, hey, if you enjoyed good, it, but... if you enjoyed it, then that's then there you go. It's a lot of fun. I mean, you got to watch the original Squid Game to really appreciate it, I think. But they do some fun stuff with it. Um, four hundred four hundred fifty six people playing in it. But yeah, I mean, there's that. There's a couple other shows, and like. Like, I could mention them, but I always, like, said I would ex exempt them from, like, our top ten, any reality shows, just to make it clean and easy. Um, I mean, that's fair. Because otherwise yeah. I'd have, like, survival oh, yeah. and stuff in the mix. But Yeah. And that's, that stuff we'll, we'll, obviously, we'll talk about in some videos coming up yeah. in the, early in the new year. But. but there's, like, you know, I'm always just holding out hope, like, that someday... In the future, we'll have time uh, to do other shows because there's some couple reality shows I don't want to mention that would be super cool for uh, you to watch as well. That I think would be right up our alley. Season one of American Idol. That's right, American Idol. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so that's I think will be a fun video that I'll do uh, probably yeah. around in January when we're doing our other yearly wrap-up stuff sure all right and how about uh, any other uh goals in general i want to i want to i want to lose a lot of weight because stuff's too tight on me now i can't fit a lot of my clothes i need to yeah. desperately uh get into shape i need to get a new job i need to uh i want to completely revamp on my life and lifestyle right now honestly I need to yeah, I mean, like some stuff. we, I think we both talked about last year as a thing that we. I, I mean, I failed. I, I've pretty much stayed. 
I yeah, I pretty much stayed more or less at the same weight. Um, I've actually lost a little bit of weight um, due to some changes in my diet, but it hasn't been much because I'm still some changes in my diet. I didn't change. I didn't drastically change all that much, but hmm. um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of work to be done uh, in that regard for myself as well. Yeah, my so, diet is horrible. Um, it really is. Yeah, my diet is pretty bad. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so. my goal last year was to to be healthier now than it was then. And it's just not the case. I dropped the ball on that big yeah. time. So yeah. I got a lot of work to do. A lot of stuff I want to uh, change in the new year, but hopefully we can have some fun along the way and uh, get to celebrate our milestone uh, in some capacity. Like we really would like to do some sort of in-person thing. And if we did, I would go all out with it. If not, I was, I know we'll still do something to commemorate it. You know, mm. whatever we can do. Yeah. And, you know, we'll have we'll have our our regular stuff coming up, uh, because it'll also coincide with uh, a new season of Tark Around All Stars or Survivor Simulation, It'll be around that time. So. Oh yeah, that'll be that'll be yeah. good stuff. Always a good time. Those are always a good time sure but a lot of i got some different ideas so i'd like to try out and we'll see uh what happens keep it fresh keep it fun and yeah that is that's the spirit it's the spirit of it all um i also i bought a planner this year and i really would like to start using a planner to be more regimented and getting stuff oh. accomplished each day so this is another thing too uh i've i've started work on this not a very good job. I'm actually, what I want to do, you, you reminded me, is I do, I should have gotten a journal or something. Mm -hmm. I could probably just makeshift one, but I want to keep track of stuff like you do in terms of like the shows you watch, the games you play, and like the time you put into that. I think that's like such a good way to sort of like keep track of like your progress. Yeah. So I want to try to do that, uh, like more. I also, I, I've been saying that for a couple years now, but like I, I really want to do that. I have started cataloging my games um but i i think i'm going to ultimately what i'm going to do is i'll probably catalog it in more than one place it seems like a lot of work but i feel like it's potentially a necessary thing um is that cataloging on using game eye which is like a which is actually like something to help track prices of the games that i own uh -huh. i can do stuff with that but then also on backloggery because i think backloggery just has this it's a nice its own kind of nice feeling to it in its own way um but also doing that same sort of thing with like the anime figures that i have i need to i need to update my figure collection um in that regard um i also and, been using yeah, backlog I mean, by the way which is it's a great website as well more, more organization for sure yeah they don't have an app yet that's that's i'm that's waiting for that thing, yeah yeah um yeah but yeah, and in terms of movies and stuff, I would like to watch more movies, of course. And uh, we are going to be doing another film buffs challenge right in January, so I'll be able to probably knock off some big ones there again. Like last time, I got some big movies that I uh, hadn't gotten around to watching. So hopefully, we'll do the same. Yeah, I I, I was so excited to to when I with the ones I saw. I was freaking watch the thing and Wolf of Wall Street, like pretty great. Yeah pretty great movies i've got so. some some that uh at least one or two that'll probably show up in my top 10 list maybe of the year mm. we'll see mm. all right so um uh, you want to go into uh some reflection on the past month and read some comments we can do that make this a extra beefy episode here now we're about on pace for an hour and a half Shouldn't be too long. I've only got. I don't think we had many comments. So, so since the last podcast, we've released our wish review. We've released Welcome <laughs> to the Tarkaran 2023. We've released Survivor Fiji episode seven. We've released the conclusion to the Choose Your Own Gens challenge, where we basically discuss Kingdom Hearts in depth. We just released the Super Mario RPG review, Survivor Fiji episode eight, and uh, our ten YouTube channels that we recommend as well mm. um, so do you have a highlight for the past month out of those 
I would say, yeah, the 10 YouTube channels. Um, I thought that was just a really fun discussion. Talk about stuff that we love, love to watch, love to listen to. Um, and, uh, okay. yeah, causing me to reflect on, on a lot of the stuff that I, that I just enjoy about the platform. So. Hmm. Interesting. So for me, I would say maybe our, you know, the Super Mario RPG review was fun, but I also, I think the Wish yeah. review was fun for, uh, different reasons. It's fun yeah, to have a was... movie you don't like sometimes, you know. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> to share in that yeah i would say yeah mario rpg is probably it was up also up there for me too i mean the wish review again yeah it's fun fun, fun for maybe all the wrong reasons <laughs> but uh yeah it's still fun still fun to talk about fun to discuss um but yeah getting to talk about mario rpg for a good long while it never that never hurts nobody ever complained about that but man so. within within the next month we're gonna have some heavy hitters coming out some Real uh, banging content. We'll be mm. taking a uh, a brief uh, break um, for it'll be like a week's break, probably. I don't know exactly how the videos will be paced. I don't know if you'll really know the difference or not, but for us, we'll be taking a week off from recording, so mm-hmm. uh, we'll be able to come back refreshed for the new year and kick it off right. All right, let's see what, if there's any comments here. Okay, so we got a comment from... Uh, Gordon Ramsay. Yes, from Gordon Ramsay. He commented on our uh, Wish review and said it was rubbish. So. It was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> so. It's <just> rubbish. <laughs> so uh, we got a, a comment from Chase Ferrier on... Episode six hey. of Survivor Fiji. He actually has been leaving comments pretty consistently on several episodes, but some I might I might hold out on reading. Um, it was good to hear from you though. He said for this episode, this was the episode where Anthony goes home after the whole altercation oh, yeah. tribal council. Yep. He said the tribe swap came at the perfect time because this season definitely needed a shake up after last episode. Rocky was definitely horrible to Anthony and bullied him, and he was stuck in a bad spot, but I believe that that can be true while also admitting that Anthony could have done more to better himself in the social game. Agreed. Yeah, for sure. And my brother, Krillin Ball Z, commented on that same episode, I agreed with all the Rocky opinions, but also agree that this episode wasn't Jeff Probst's best look either, and we saw a bit of toxicity even from him for a brief moment. Yeah, because he was like, sure, right. was he the... was like, he was like, Anthony, do you even want to be here? And he was like, why don't you yeah, stick up like, for what yourself? Yeah, what the heck was that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> even he was like, stick up for yourself, be a man. And it was like, <laughs> That's kind of what he was given. Yeah, he was like, yeah, it's like, okay, I mean, yeah, energy. I think there's, a, there's a, like, there's something, I think, I think there's a positive masculine trait to be said about that, but you, none of that was being shown. <laughs> Like now that was being shown on display. <laughs> it was like, come on, you will, you will wimp, Anthony. Who huh? you? Mm-hmm. Speak up for yourself. <laughs> that's that's that is exactly what Jeff Probst did in that episode. You can go back and watch. <laughs> All right. So my brother left a comment also on our wish review, and this is a massive, oh. massive comment. Oh, right. oh man. He said, I totally agree that it is unfortunate that this is our Disney 100 movie. As I've thought about it, I really wish they would have thrown all subtlety in self-reference out the window and did some wacky Avengers-style crossover movie. You could have ha- you could have an original yes. character or two in the mix. You're Sora, if you will. Although I think having Mickey Mouse as the lead probably works best in this theoretical plot. But have some crazy plot where Genie's magic gets out of control and opens a rift in the Disney multiverse, so to speak. A la Spider-Man No Way Home with Doctor Strange causing the merging of the multiverses. Pulling various characters from Disney past and present into a subspace emissary style adventure to return everyone to their universes. Uh, The plot in the middle I haven't mapped out yet, but just a lot of shenanigans involving so many different Disney characters. Maybe Genie, unfortunately, would have to be voiced by a Robin Williams impersonator, interacting with Will yeah. Smith Genie, or some other cartoon version meets well, live action version combo. Well, you can just do um, uh, D- Dan Castellaneta, who voiced Genie. Hmm. 
Yeah. Because he did it for the TV show. He did it for the game, for the Kingdom Hearts game. He's basically been Genie's voice outside mm. of uh, outside of Robin Williams. And, and he's amazing. He's great. I, I think he does a great job. You could have, just have him do it. So you're saying maybe have that Genie interact with Will Smith's Genie. <laughs> or some other like car- that would be <laughs> see <laughs> or, this is this is fantastic yeah what, what a wonderful idea or, or some other cartoon version meets live action version combo uh also uh, stitch meeting spot from the good dinosaur two chaotic little characters and so on and so forth you get the picture i i i watched the good dinosaur <laughs> i don't even remember who that character is i i, I did not like it. that movie at all it's not very good oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, but all characters appear in their original art styles. 2D characters are 2D, Pixar style or Pixar style, and live action 3D animated looks as such. And then after sending everyone home to close the barriers between universes, in Mickey's hands forms a Keyblade. Kicking off, no, of the, course. <laughs> kicking off the announcement of Kingdom Hearts the movie, an origin story for <laughs> Mickey Mouse becoming a Keyblade wielder. And you call it <laughs> Disney Infinity, the possibilities are infinite. I'm sure in execution to be a lot cringier than I'm imagining, and I guess the multiverse thing has been kind of overdone, but I just think going ham for Disney 100 would have far exceeded this movie's showing. I know this is a long one, but I wish this vision came true. Yeah, people have, people have even gone back and said, like, like how when Wreck-It, Ralph Breaks the Internet, how there was the scene that just amounted to nothing with all the Disney princesses together. Yeah. That movie's not very good. Movie's um, the... I, I think it's better than people make it make it out to be. Oh, um, but I was also in a rough. I was also in a. T- I was also in a really tough state of mind when I saw that movie, and it was very like. That movie was very like. Um, what's the word? It was like it was very like cathartic, I guess, or like it was very therapeutic. Um, or... Therapeutic, yeah, I think so. It was very therapeutic for the stuff. You I love was doing seeing Miranda time. sings on your screen, in the Disney uh, world. No. No, no, no! Don't get me wrong. Don't, don't, don't call, <laughs> no, no, don't no. call me on that. Miranda Singh is my favorite no, no, no. Disney character. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if I saw it again, I'd be like, I'd probably hate it. Yeah, I'd almost certainly hate it. I'll but I've only seen it once. That with and... you and just dunk on it because yeah. it was so unpleasant for me. Yeah, it was so, it was so <laughs> unpleasant. <laughs> I was unpleasant. Well, that's the thing. The critic, the critic review of that is actually fairly high, and the audience score is not high. Yeah, the critics like were there's, fairly that was high, distinct, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> they were fairly <laughs> stoned while they were watching it, possibly, so, allegedly. Um, so, what do you think of all this leading up but, to uh, the kickoff of Kingdom Hearts the movie? I, I don't necessarily like that part of it, the last part of it, but oh. I honestly, if they had planned something like a Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts, or something similar, I think his general idea is also very creative. That would have been a great, like, celebration. Here's the thing. Yeah. There is apparently a short film out there that does kind... It doesn't It doesn't really do exactly what he's talking about, but, like, it has all of the classic Disney, like, from the Renaissance and, and all of the different periods, Silver Age, Golden Age. They all appear in, like, at, like, Disney Studios. They did, like, a short film mm. to celebrate the 100th anniversary. I have yet to watch it, for, but from people who've seen it, they were, like... It was so much better movie than Wish was to celebrate okay. 100 years of, of the studio. So yeah. um, I have yet to see that. I, I will go and probably watch that soon because um, I've heard really good stuff about it. But I think you could probably watch. I think it's on Disney Plus as far as I'm aware. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's so much. That's just so much better idea. I think doing like a weird wild. That's that's what, what I was where I was going to go with the princess scene. You have something mm. crazy with all of them teaming up. And, and going on an adventure together. Yeah. Like, why not? You know? Yeah, they really dropped the ball with the whole Wish thing. Because they, they hyped it up, yeah. too. Like, saying, like, 100 years has led up to this. They had yeah. some sort of uh, commercial like that. Basically, like, this is going to be the most special movie ever kind of thing. It's, it's the story of the wishing star. And it's like, it's really not... <laughs> it's really not about that yeah. at all. Yeah, I'm kind of on, I'm kind of on board for just going wacky, just... <laughs> Over the top, like big uh, fanfare movie, basically just constant references and interactions between random characters would be cool. Also, I remember being wrong, but was wasn't Peter Pan like really weirdly tall when he showed up in that movie? In which movie? Wasn't P- Peter Pan 
in Wish. Well, I mean, maybe I'm, I mean, rem- maybe like I'm remembering slug, wrong. You know. like, yeah, it's it just like Peter, like Peter Pan, Pan or like Peter Man. Wow. Wow. Peter Man. Yeah. I know. I thought about that one real long and hard. Uh, all right. So on the Tarkron podcast, episode 10, Ari Louie commented, Ooh. Another great episode, gents. Something I think could be really fun for you guys to consider for a future episode, and something Ryan and I did earlier on in Otaku Bros, is a favorite game of our childhood and favorite games of our adult life so far. I know you've done the movies that define us, and maybe even games that define you. Memory escapes me. But it could be fun to dedicate one episode's main topic to talking through the top 10 games of your childhood, plus another episode detailing the top 10 games of your adult life so far. You guys can obviously be the ones to create the nuance regarding rules of what's a contender for one list versus the other, but I'd love to hear deep dive discussions for each top 10 list similar to what Ryan and I have done in the past. Regardless, enjoy the open-ended discussion on a variety of topics. Always enjoyable to tune in. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, we did we did sort of go into that, I, I think, in our in sort of games that define us, but we it was a little looser, like, because there were definitely some games that were more recent that I'd played yeah, kind versus of like a games mix, from... Mixed bag, yeah. Yeah. Because there's like definitely nostalgia games there, but they were also games or more recent. Um, and then we did a top so ten we'll... games of the decade or favorite games of the decade, which is probably yeah. going to be a lot of overlap with those two, I imagine. But you know, there's mm. because yeah, like most of our adult life will, will be spent in that la- that last decade, huh? Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so it'd, it'd be kind of hard. I mean, I mean, it's definitely something to keep in mind, keep in the back mm-hmm. pocket, because we it's something that we could probably talk about. I would say in years to come, but um, I mean, there's definitely ones I could do. We could do a full episode of childhood games that I didn't include ones yeah. that like I'd only really primarily played in childhood, like Golden Eye uh, type yeah. games, um, Pirates of Dark Water on the Super Nintendo. You know, these. I didn't, ta- I didn't talk about. I've talked about Donkey Kong 64 and other places, but I didn't get to talk about it specifically there. Yeah. Um, that's a, like a big game from my childhood. Um, Mario 64. I think I ta- I think I had Zelda. I think I had Ocarina of Time was on that list, but I didn't really talk about Mario 64 being like a really landmark important game for me. Uh, Mario Party 2. Um, yeah, lots mm-hmm. of little games like that. Chrono Trigger. I'd, try- I'd probably talked about Chrono Trigger probably already, but... Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then the yeah, last. No, that's good. That's good. The last yeah. comment of the evening comes to us from East Helium on our conclusion to the Choose Your Own Gents Challenge video. Ooh. He said, So I might be biased, but this is my favorite theme so far, and I think we need to revisit it at some point. And the 100% gentrification. I love it. Thanks for running the show, Zach. <laughs> Always appreciate it. Yes, the gentrification. Has been the gen- our our <laughs> our gentrification, total yeah. gentrification. Yeah, we, I mean, I can't. I gotta imagine we'll have another choose your own gents challenge. Who can probably. who can it's be mad? Uh, that's like such an an inviting thing to vote for. You get oh, choose your own. Yeah, well, I'll choose my own. Okay, cool, absolutely, cool. Yeah, uh, speaking, speaking <laughs> absolutely. Of, I have to get the signups for the film buff challenge up soon. And I also have to yeah. like, start collecting people's themes for when I do the sign-ups next month for the mm. Gents Challenge. But, it's good, uh, good to keep that right. on the brain. So that's all the uh, comments for now. Cool. As always, you can comment on any any video at any time, and we'll read it on the next uh, Top Ryan podcast that we'll record. Always at the end here. We have a little time stamps for you to so check them out. Uh, anything else you'd like to to share going into the new year? No, I don't think so. I mean, uh, I mean, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Uh, it's probably this will probably come out after Christmas, but um, we're we're gearing up for for a gift exchange here somewhere around there. Um, we yeah. actually expected it. We actually expected it to happen <laughs> already. Yeah, we were, we were expecting it to happen tonight, <laughs> but that was just a little bit of miscommunication <laughs> on our part. So. Um, so hopefully we'll get that done soon. We're looking forward to, to that happening, but, um, yeah, that'll be out yeah, I mean, probably very soon after this, actually within the next couple of days yeah. by the, by around when this comes out by the metric, but yeah, I mean, so just, I stay healthy, stay, stay safe. Um, mm-hmm. you know, it's always, 
the, a lesser pleasant time of year, I would say for most people, you know, going out of the holidays, it can be kind yeah. of, kind of rough. It's, it's rough. Particularly like on the East coast, different parts of the, definitely different parts of the country. It gets, it just gets dark. It gets dark too early. It's so, true, but losing it gets, sunlight. And you get this high coming on the holidays. It's like holiday, holidays, and then boom, it's gone. Nothing. And it's just cold yeah. and you're sad. Yeah. So, <laughs> but there's always, always, there's always stuff to look forward to. You know, there's always yeah. family and friends around, so just try to try to keep a keep a good outlook on on life and things. And uh, I'm I'm looking forward to I, I'm having to spend some extra time with my folks now because they're going to be moving next year, mm-hmm. which is I hard for me to say, still hasn't really sunk in, and it probably still won't until it, they are leaving. So. That's gonna be kind of a difficult thing, I think, mm-hmm. for me to, to have to deal with next year. But, um, yeah. But we'll we'll just have to we'll just have to figure it out. I just gotta figure it out. We'll work so, through it. We'll all work, like... we'll all work through everything, and uh, yeah. Look forward to uh, another year of Tarkron for sure. I mean, we've got some stuff fun, some fun stuff planned right out the gate uh, into the new year. Some of my favorite videos to do, we do, we're going to be doing right in the, the start of the year. And then, of course, you know, we've got a lot of fun plans in store for the year. And um, we'll just keep having fun with it, you know, always keeping it fresh. Yeah. And we really appreciate, I really appreciate everyone who takes the time to watch any of our videos. If you're watching this now, and uh, if you ever leave a comment or if you watch any any other videos, you don't have to watch them all, but I appreciate it, really do. So, I, I'm also hoping to get into uh, doing some uh, videos on my solo channel in the new year. It's a goal of mine as well. It's been a couple of years since I've done anything there, but I've got some uh, fun ideas for things to do there as well. There you go. Just stay tuned to the channel. New videos every week. And we keep it going. We'll be we'll be here. We'll be here. Fun year ahead. All right. Yeah. So thank you all for watching, and until next time. Take care of yourself.